In this video, we're going to continue working on our GMAS tracer to perform the mat. But before I continue, I want to just show you a couple other swipe options you have when you're working inside the GMAS tracer or the GMAS or the action tool that we're going to be looking at in just a couple minutes. If I take my cursor and I swipe to the left side in the editing panel down here, my two view layout switches to a one view layout and it's showing me my batch schematic. Also, while we're here, let me point out the little blue dot you see right there. That's indicating that the tool has animation and keyframes on it. If I swipe again to the left, I'm going to step out of my batch schematic and go back to my two view layout. If I swipe on the right side of the editing panel, my two view layout switches to my animation channel editor. I swipe again to the right. I go back to my two view layout. And then one more swiping option is the priority. So as you build your masks, you'll notice there is a priority button over here that I can click on. I can access the priority editor for my masks. Let me set my viewport to be F4, the matte output, and I'll discard my priority editor for right now. In this case, our masks are not overlapping each other, but if they were, you would use the priority editor to control the hierarchy of the mask because that hierarchy and the settings you have for the individual mask will affect the end result. So since it's a common thing to go to the priority editor, instead of coming over here and clicking on the button, if I just tap on the bottom of the UI, the priority editor comes up. And then I could change the priority if I needed to, and then tap back again on the bottom, and I hide the priority editor. All right, back to creating our mask. Looking at the viewport, the end result, that's not the end result of what we want. Yes, we've isolated the guy and the girl, but this mat is not going to give us the result that we need. But that's why we're using the GMAS Tracer. And when you have multiple masks, as we do here in the GMAS Tracer, you work with the GMAS Tracer on an individual mask. So we have the guy mask selected right now. I'll come down to the mask control down here and you'll see a button that reads tracer. When I click on it, we go to the tracer parameters for that individual mask. Now to work with this and see the result of the tracer, we need to change what we're looking at. Right now we are looking at the matte output for this tool. So if I go over to the viewing flyout, an option called G mask tracer object, F eight is the hotkey for that. So I can choose this here, or I could have hit F8. And you'll notice now, we do not see the other mask. We are only focusing on the one mask that is applied to the guy when we are in the GMAS Tracer object view, the currently selected mask. If I hit F4, we go back to looking at the mat output. I hit F8, we go back looking at the GMAS Tracer object. Looking down over here where it reads analysis, for our mask when we're looking at the tracer you'll see there's an add button i'm going to click on that and then in the viewport we just added two color pickers for this analysis i'll hold control and spacebar to zoom in and i'll hold the spacebar to pan over to get a better look at this what these analysis boxes or color pickers do is the green one is to be placed where you want transparency the red one is what you want opaque to see the true result of what is happening, I'm going to hit F8 once again. Now we're looking at the end result of the GMAS tracer on this mask. And that is beautiful. That's exactly what we want. No, of course not. I'll take the green color picker and I'll drag it into the area that we know the green screen is. Now I'll take the red color picker and start moving that into the areas of his shirt to start setting what pixels I want to have opaque. Keep in mind the size of the box and the position of the box will determine the end result of the GMAS tracer. I'm gonna take this green one and move it right where we see that tracker marker on the back of the wall there. And then you can manipulate or move the red color picker down here under his chin until you achieve a similar result of what you see here. And you can add more color pickers, add background, add foreground, or delete selected if you want to delete one. But if I choose add background, you'll see another one, the green picker, is added at the center of the mask, and that's not giving me the result that we want. So obviously I'll take this and drag this over here. So I can start moving this around, trying to find where is it going to give me the result that I want. 
maybe over here, somewhere like this. And then if I need to manipulate my red tracker, something like that. So here I've got a pretty decent result. I notice we got some decent softness around his hair. We've got a nice clean line. We can finesse this afterwards, but this is a great start for the mask and the key for the guy. I'm gonna zoom back. Don't even worry about this woman. Don't worry about what's happening over there because we're going to use the other mask and the tracer parameters to isolate and focus on her. All I'm concerned about right now is the mat that we are pulling for him. Let me make my viewport a little larger and we'll zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little better. I wanna point out the softness controls you have for the tracer. You have your background softness, See, so you can start adjusting that if you needed to. I just realized auto key is on, so I'm creating keyframes. It doesn't really matter, but I could right click and choose delete keyframe to get rid of that and then turn off auto key. And you have a foreground slider and affect the softness of that. You also have an invert button. There's post-processing such as shrinking, dilate, blur, lots of controls to finesse the mat that you're pulling with the GMAS tracer. It's why I really like using this. Let me adjust the background softness. I mean, I'll bring it up to a value somewhere around six. My foreground also about six, seven, somewhere around there. All right, enough fussing about him. I think this is good enough. Let's hit the F1 key to go back to our input. I will select the mask that is focusing on her, and then I'll hit F8 once again. So now we're focusing and soloing only on that mask. Let's choose Add Analysis. I'll hit F8 once again to look at the end result of this, and I'll drag the red into the hair. That's what I want to keep opaque. So I think I'll take my green box and drag it up here in this area, and I'll keep my red box about there. So I'm holding on to this softness around her hair. I like that a lot. Let's see if we can adjust our foreground softness a little bit. Now, don't get too crazy. That's going to crunch it too much. I'll bring it up to about a two or a three. I think that's going to do the job. Don't worry about him, because again, that's all being taken care of with the other mask. Now I'm gonna hit F4, which will allow us to look at both of the end results of the individual mask with the tracer settings. Let's go down to our editing panel and go to the output tab this time. Right now we have one output that is using both masks and it's generating a primary mat and a comp. Remember the two outputs we saw on the node inside our batch. I want to create two different outputs. One of them is going to be only for the mat and the end result of that mat for the guy, and one is going to be an output focused only on the girl. So to do that, let's create another output. So I'm going to choose copy because I want it to be a duplicate of what it was to start with, but I also want to rename these to be organized. So I click rename and I'll name this output girl. This is the one we'll use for her. Choose enter. I'll select the top one, rename, underscore guy. Okay, so to edit and control the end result of the mat for each one of these outputs, I need to tell this output to only use this mask that's on the girl. To do that, I go back to my tools. Well, first of all, make sure you have the girl output selected. I go back to my tool flyout. The very top, you'll see edit output. I choose that and I come into my schematic, I'll click on the guy mask and I'm gonna click on its axis. So I just edited the output, so only the girl's mask is its end result. I'll hit the M key to go back to my move tool. I'll select the output for the guy. I'll return back to the edit output and I'll click on the girl mask and I'll click on its axis. And then I'll hit the M key once again to go back to my select tool. So now, as I select each one of these outputs, you're going to notice the mask that is listed is the mask for either the girl, I select the guy output, it is the mask that is on the guy. And it's showing me in the schematic exactly which one is part of this output. I can use the navigator to slide over and center my nodes. And now, if I select this view and I hit F4, I can look at the guy output, I can look at the girl output. By the way, the hotkey for the edit output is option E. I should have mentioned that earlier. So you can access the edit output by hitting option E. Back over in this viewport, I'm going to hit the escape key. We'll take us back out to batch. Now looking at the GMAS tracer, you'll see there's a gray output. That's because currently there are too many outputs for this node to display them individually on the node at this size. There's so a couple options we can do. 
If I hold Shift and hit the C key, you'll see now we expand the node to show all the outputs. So now we have the girl mat, the girl comp, the guy mat output, and the guy comp output. But let me hit Shift C once again to minimize it, because there's another option we could do. We really don't need the comp output for this GMAS tracer. All I really need are the individual mats for the girl and the guy. So down below for the GMAS tracer, if I select the output one girl and I come over where it says output selection, you'll see the little yellow highlight for comp. Just click on that. It will turn it off. Now that will not be one of the outputs. Then I can select the output one guy and do the same thing. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that we now see two different outputs, one for the guy and one for the girl. And now because I've got my tooltips turned off, I'm not going to get a flyout when I hover over the different outputs. So again, holding Shift C will allow me to see what each one of those outputs are by the naming that we did inside of the GMAS tracer. We know the top mat output is for the guy and the bottom output is for the girl. So if I want to, I can hit Shift C again to bring it back down to its normal size node. So that's it for this video. The next video, we're going to start finessing each one of these maps independently and continue to build our comp.